the most disruptive technology ever. Um, I mean, the crazy thing is that, you know, the, the advantage that humans have is that uh, we're smarter than other creatures. Like, if we got into a fight with a gorilla, the gorilla would definitely win. Um, but we're smart. So, uh, but now for the first time, there's going to be something that is smarter than the smartest human. Like, way smarter than the smartest human. And uh, as you can see from the journey, the art that AI can create is incredible. It's so beautiful. And it does it, you know, within seconds. So, we're at, I mean, I, I think, you know, there's that sort of saying, uh, may you live in interesting times, which I think is like, not exactly a good thing sometimes. Uh, but, but would we actually live, I think we live in the most interesting of times. Um, the advent of AI, and I actually thought to myself at one point, like, uh, should, you know, do I re would I really want to be alive at this point? Like, let's say that there is some AI Armageddon um, that happens, some sort of AI apocalypse. I think I would still be want to be alive at this time to see it. <laughs> and hopefully, you know, hopefully not, not create, cause it. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's just a, I think we live in an, an, an extremely interesting time, you know, um, because the things that you see AI being able to do now, it's going to do much more with each passing year. Um, cars will absolutely drive themselves better than any person could drive. In this age of technological marvels, Elon... ...partisan place that we are now. Um, stories go, come and go every 48 hours. Not this one. This one is staying at the top third, top quartile of all press every week now for five weeks. Because these images are, are really striking. You know, I, I think what's lost in the narrative, particularly around detailing and legals, what's going to work, who's going to sue who is, why is he doing this in the first place? And I think there's a good reason. Um, Tesla and SpaceX and all of his other initiatives pays zero dollars in advertising, nothing. The only car company on earth that size that pays nothing in advertising. How did he do it? He did it on the back of Twitter and other social media platforms. The problem with uh, the, the policy so far and the multiple bills, including the CHIPS Act and of course the Anti-Inflation Act, whatever you want to call it, is just massive spending, but it's the target of where that spending went. Here's the problem. Most of it's going to the S&P 500 companies. They're important. They're big employers in America. However, they only represent 40% of the economy. I, I want everybody to understand this bank deal left $20 billion in the hands of taxpayers. And, you know, FDIC insurance is actually paid by banks into a big fund, but $250 billion. This took $20 billion. It cost the, the fund $20 billion. That, those are... Let's call them worthless assets. With uncompromising analysis, O'Leary unravels the layers of Musk's provocations, thrusting them into the glaring spotlight, imploring us to comprehend the seismic impact of Musk's actions. The, what the shockwave went through that people haven't seen the end of is every bank now, the 4,600 that mm -hmm. remain, where most small businesses bank and do payroll on Wednesday night, have been told, hold up on loans because we have to see the effects of real estate going through your portfolio. Wow. S&P is a non-ESG company, and my goodness, it's an EV company, and nobody, nobody can explain why that happened. So now we have a situation where we need to shine the light on ESG, and that's making a lot of these proxy companies, the two big ones, very uncomfortable because they make billions in fees, they're not accountable to anybody, and all of a sudden you and I are talking about this issue, and the Congress is coming after them. I say, great, let's shine the light of transparency on these companies. There's no reason we shouldn't be doing that, and let's get some competition. Let's get a third and fourth proxy company that provides transparency, but ESG is a big deal and now it's bubbling up as an issue as the world listens the echo of o'leary's warning resonates underscoring the interconnectedness of financial markets and the influence that a single provocateur can wield he can't he can't raise any capital because the regional banks have stopped lending to him as they wait to see what the new liquidity rules are this is why i was on the hill yesterday i was banging the drum up and down the hall saying Everybody, let's wake up to what's happening to my small companies. I got 34 plus companies. They can't raise a dime. There, there's no Bidenomics for them.
They have no capital, and that's a big problem, and it's manifesting itself. Those are the people that are looking for cheaper toothpaste and all the issues that are going around inflation. Core inflation is not down. CPI, yes, but core inflation, the real inflation that hurts a small individual that's trying to live off 58,000, they're getting. And this will show up in the polls. This will become political. But we've got to save small business right now. We have to do everything in our power to make sure they get access to capital. This is a problem that's only six to eight weeks old. Mm. You talk to it's only on the big guys. EVs get captured in that because obviously... In order to operate an EV successfully, 